Dear colleagues, good evening. It's a pleasure to continue having you at our second day of sessions. Today, I'm happy to introduce you Dao Fong Lam from Vietnam. Dao is the Def Deputy Director of the Quality Management Center of Canso University, or CTU. He has been a lecturer of English since he earned a bachelor's degree in teaching English in 1996. He began his work in quality management in 2013 after earning the master's degree of education in assessment, measurement, and evaluation from the University of Western Australia. Dao was an Asian Quality Assurance Network Chief Quality Officer for CPU from 2013 to 2016 and has been a CTU representative to AUN events. In addition, he has been Asian University Network Assessor and Vietnam Ministry of Education and Training Accreditor. He is currently a member of the National Council for Consultancy, Development, and Appraisal of the report referencing the Vietnamese Qualifications Framework to the Asian Qualifications Reference Framework. His experience also stems from international collaborative projects such as building university industry learning and development through innovation and technology project and complex organization quality management project and numerous development projects in the Vietnam Mekong Delta. Now, the floor is yours. Welcome to our conference. Thank you, Brenda. Brenna, you see my slides? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to the conference committee for inviting me to share my experience and expertise to the participants in Honduras and in the conference. So now, like you can see, I am here from Vietnam and you are in Honduras, we are 13 hours difference. So it is now around 4 a.m. in the early morning. The sun is still sleeping. I have to stay and to communicate with you. Uh, I am from the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, like you can see. Where I am from, there are a lot of Dao, sorry to interrupt you, yes. but I think you cannot see the slides moving. Are you moving the slides? You see the slide moving now? No. Can you try sharing again? Okay. Because I see the slides moving. Yes, now? No. Why? Maybe if you um, share again and you press F5. Ah, no. Yes. Yes, it's, now. It's loading. Okay. So this is the place where I'm from. I'm from the Mekong Delta in Vietnam. Where you can see we have the rice paddy fields. We have the senior ladies living near the water bodies. It's a very rustic pictures of the local farmers in my country. We have fish, we have rice, we have the lotus flowers. Uh, like Brenda had just introduced, I have been teaching as a lecturer of English since 1996. So these years, I have been teaching English for 25 years to the local people. And since 2013, I started my second profession as quality management staff in my campus, Kansas University. Today, I attend the conference as a presenter, and I would like to share with you some information about the tertiary education system in my country. 
view of Kankan University, where I have been working since 1996. And then I will share with you some key information regarding the online teaching and learning in Vietnam, in my campus, and in my school of foreign languages. And then I will go deep down to share with you the point of views of my direct students in this semester. Vietnam is a nation in the Association of Southern Asian Nations, I would say the ASEAN. You see, it's my country. And the ASEAN also has the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and other countries. In 2016, there were 237 universities, including the public and the private ones. And two years ago, the number remained the same. However, the total number of students increased a little bit. In 2016, it was around 1.7 million. And two years ago, in 2019, it 1.7 plus students. The um, 1. Uh, if you count and if you added the numbers together, we had roughly yeah, almost 1.8 million students in tertiary education system in Vietnam. Um, the orientations for this academic year, 2021-2022, like you can see, the Ministry of Education and Training would like the institutions and the entire system to apply more information technology in the entrance exams. Due to the COVID-19 and due to the restriction situations across the country, now we need to apply more IT in the teaching, learning, educational activities, including the matriculation. And back here in Vietnam, we also have to accelerate the university autonomy. The government is empowering the institutions in their daily, in their routine activities by lending them, giving them more autonomy. Five years ago in 2016, we had our national qualification framework, but this academic year and the years to come, we need to make sure that we fully implement the AQF to benefit our students and our stakeholders. One key work that is to measure the achievement of the learning outcomes of our students. And like you can see, this is quite new task to the lecturers, to the managers, and to the students. That is to engage in the digital transformation. In my opinion, uh, if you look at this, and you see it is a long journey to transform from a passive environment to an immersive environment in terms of digital engagement and experience. Um, I hope the first few slides pro provide you with an overview of higher education in Vietnam. Now, welcome to my campus. Welcome to Kangta University. Again, it is the map of the Mekong Delta in Vietnam. We are at the southern tip of the country. And it is Kangta University located in Kangta City, 
in the heart of the Mecca Delta. This year, we are 55 years old, and we are a flagship university in the Mecca Delta region. In 2013, we became a member of ASEAN University Network. I just discussed with Brenner, and it was funny to know that the university also possesses eight campuses like your university. The eight campuses cover an area of roughly 2.2 million square meters. We have about 1,800 staff of whom 1,100 roughly. Yeah, uh, academic stuff. In terms of ranking, the university is ranked in the top 500 universities in Asia, according to QS Asia rankings. And when discussing the website and the IT system, we are in the top 12 universities according to web metrics. Now, so at the back, you can see the turtle hall. That is the grand hall where we celebrate the important events for the students and for our staff, like the orientation week, the convocation, the graduation ceremony. Because Vietnam is a communist country, so we also have the Communist Party Committee. We have the Board of Trustees. We have the Rectory Board, the Quality Assurance Council, in which I am a member. And we have the colleges or the schools, the centers, institutes and the supporting units, the department, the personnel, the office of finance. And here you can see the number of the learners for undergraduate education this year we provide 109 study programs to about 44,700 students. We also provide 19 doctoral programs and 52 master's programs to up to nearly 2,900 students. As a multidisciplinary university, we collaborate with a lot of international partners for the research projects and for collaborative projects. So in some times in our campus or in our university, there are up to 50,000 students. To provide our learners, our students, with the learning environment and learning materials, we have a central library, which is connected to the libraries of many, many different training colleges and schools. And because we are a member of AUN, so we have the privilege and the right to connect to the learning materials of the AUN system online library to make sure that our learners, our staff, have adequate access to the learning materials to serve their teaching, research activities, of course, learning activities, when it comes to students. In information and technology system of the university, so it's quite technical, uh, but I would like to introduce that we have the LMS, the LCMS. We try to 
provide the students with the high speed internet connection. And because we provide Google accounts, so the staff and the learner or students can teach and can learn using the Google Classroom function. Foreign language, or oh, teaching foreign language is a key national policy. So the government has equipped us with the multifunctional computer labs within the National Foreign Language Project. And we also have the nine online labs where the lecturers can provide distant education services to the learners in the city, outside the city, in the Mekong Delta. Now we are going to the key points of the conference that is online learning and teaching to survive the COVID-19. When we consider the quality indicators for distant education, I would like to remind you and myself of the indicate of the indicators recommended by NITA, the National Research Center for this Education Technology Advancement at the University of Wisconsin in the States. The indicators include design, organization, support, clarity. And we must agree that in the new normal situations where most of the teaching and learning takes place online. We need to focus on the interactions, the interactions between the instructor or lecturer with a student, with the students, the interactions between and among the students, the interaction between the student and the learning materials. Brenner. Sorry, it was a microphone. Okay, yes. So you, uh, you still hear my voice, right? So the the indicators should be taken into consideration when we move from on-site teaching and learning to online teaching and learning. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Yes. Uh, then I, I will not see the slide. Huh? Okay. Uh, so, please. Okay. The service on online teaching and learning. In order to understand how the students and the lecturers cope with the new situation, there are a lot of surveys over the past time. Um, if someone tells you that Vietnam is a developing country, then you will think about many situations. And now I will give you some photos on the situations where our students, our learners, are dealing with the online learning. So people have conditions, and then they can have luxury devices supporting them with the online teaching and learning. But at the same time, there are also people from 
the remote areas. And like what you can see, they have to climb up to high places in order to have the connection to the network to study. So it's not all things in good conditions. Uh, therefore, there have been some surveys. Now, like this survey, the slide is about a national survey on online teaching and learning that the Ministry of Education and Training conducted just this year, 2021. If you look at the spider web, and you will see the students are in general more satisfied with the online teaching and learning. The lecturers are more comfortable than the students when it comes to quality of teaching, technology infrastructures and support solutions, and assessment, of course. The students are very much concerned about quality of online learning and assessment. And it seems to me, they do not have the benefits of learning support solutions. The biggest issue to the lecturers, as you can see, is their methods when teaching online and their readiness and adaptability to the new online teaching activities. However, that indicator, the students feel very happy, surprisingly. Next slide, please. Um, that is the results from the, a national survey. Uh, here in Kentucky University, we also conducted a survey just two months ago. The survey was conducted between two weeks with uh, 2,600 respondents. We invited the students from year one, year two, year three, and year four. And as you can see on the chat on the left-hand side, more than 50% of the students had quite adequate online learning experience. Because of the time limitation, we did not conduct the survey with a broader population. The students attending our survey were from the College of Engineering Technology, the School of Social Sciences and Humanities, and the School of Foreign Languages. The next slide, please. So we asked them about the devices they were using for their online learning. And the result was like you can see, the devices, the most popular devices are smartphones. Then comes laptop and desktop and a tablet. As I introduced earlier, we have the LMS system, the CTU LMS. However, the online, the teaching, learning online activities were taking place mostly on the Google Meet, Zoom, and Google Classroom. There are limited numbers using Edmodo, Teams. Next slide, please. And here are the results of the other challenges that the students had to face. The biggest issue was the unstable net connection. About 81% of the students were complaining about the disconnection, about the unstable net connection from their places, from their homes. It was difficult for them to have the smooth connection to the classroom. Up to 70% of the respondents was complaining about the distraction from the surroundings. And when I looked at the details, 
they said that there were noises from the neighborhood, there were noises from the family activities, and they were distracted with the people around them. They could not focus on the lessons, on the learning. Another big issue was the lecturers did not provide them with sufficient learning materials, or the students felt that online teaching and learning did not provide them, did not help them access to as many as learning materials as they expected to have. And of course, if you look at the top questions, you see they were complaining about the interactions between themselves, between them and their friends, and with the lecturers. Um, that was why when we designed the questionnaire, we asked the questions like, you are excited when attending the online classes? For the survey, we use like a scales. Now, the slide with the Lego scale with the five levels. One, strongly disagree. Two, disagree. Four, agree. And five, strongly agree. What I am concerned here is the students did not feel connected to their friends and to the lecturer. You can see one third of them, 31% of them responded that they are not so excited about online learning and teaching. And only 70% of them were happy with the interactions with the lecturer. The percentage was even lower when it comes to the interactions between the students and their classmates. So the online learning and teaching has been killing excitement among my students. And also, the activities do not provide enough interactions. That is a very important indicator when it comes to quality of teaching. Can we move to the next slides for the sharing from my personal course of news and translation? The last semester, I was responsible for the course of news translation. Um, that was the three credit course. And we were scheduled to meet the students, to meet each other twice a week. And for this course, I asked my students to practice of a translation of the news, economic news, political news, and especially about sports news with the focus on soccer. The next slide, please. Okay, so this is some information about how I operate, how I run my course. I use the Google platform using Google Meet. I create, I create the, the links and send the links to my students a week before or some days before the class. I also send the materials to them. And when we meet online, I provide the lectures, initial, the discussion with my students, trying to engage them, trying to motivate them. The students, they have to do the individual, individual work and also ask them to collaborate doing teamwork together so that we can increase the interactions between and among the students. In order to keep them focused, I use the checking report 
function. It is not to scare them. However, I would like them to have some adequate responsibility to their learning. The next slide, please. And now, if we look at this one, the this slide about the decline, recovery, and decline, you can see the performance of students keep going up and down during a period of time. According to that research by Bly, the students cannot perform well when the lecture times gives longer. That's why Bly recommended that there should be rest in between the class time. And then the lecturers have to think about activities to intervene and to break the silence, to recover the performance, to recover the focus, to increase the performance of the students. That's why in my class, online class, I divide the teaching and learning activities into chunks. One or two minutes uh, to make them interest. And then I provide the instruction between two to five minutes. And then I keep asking the question, motivating to respond to my questions. The interactions should be between six to 12 minutes. So after about 20 minutes, there will be a break. That should be a story. Should be something about the news outside the class. And for online learning, it is good to think about the blended learning, about the flipped classroom, and to think about as many opportunities for the students to collaborate as possible. That's why I put them in the groups and I provide them, I ask the groups to do the assignments. Next slide, please. Because we are in the tropical area, so we have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. That's why I named the groups as the seasons, to motivate them and to make them more familiar with the group members and the groups. In the next slide, you will see my design of assessment activities. The focus is to have the participatory assessment. That means my students have to assess their classmates. During the teamwork activities, they have to assess their team members. And the assessment activities need to be constructed in alignment with the learning outcomes. For online learning, I recommend there should be more formative assessment so that the students have to stay focused and keep trying during the learning journey. And for the next slide, before I present the results of my survey to my students, now let's consider my advantages and the barriers of online teaching and learning. We have an enabling IT environment or IT system. And with a click on Google, we have the risk online resources. And as a lecturer, we also are familiar to the online meetings. However, to the side of the students, so many surveys have been revealing that they are demotivated. And when they interact online, there are limited physical resources for them, the learning materials, the physical exercises, And for online teaching and learning, 
we have to redesign the pedagogy. The lecturer have to redesign the teaching and the students have to get used to, to be familiar to the new ways of learning. Assessment of learning outcomes, assessment of online learning outcomes, I would say online assessment of learning outcomes is also an issue. That's why I conducted a survey to my own students. On the slide, you can see on the left-hand side, the information is in red ink, that is the local language, the Vietnamese language. And on the right-hand side, you see the results in English. I was trying to group the responses from my students in groups like one, two, three, four, five, according to the frequencies of the responses. So the most responses were about the students themselves being demotivated. They were not very happy. They were not motivated. And some of them also said that they had to face the mental and physical health issues. If you look at group number three, many of my students were struggling with the learning resources. And because all lecturers are providing teaching online, all lecturers are asking the students to finish deadlines, the online exercises. The students were feeling that they had to complete heavy workloads. And there were weak interactions between the students themselves and between the students and the lecturers. And the devices they use for online learning also cause some problems because some old devices, because of the limited devices. Uh, what I was worried is some students are confused about the future. Okay, <clears throat> um, thank you. So in my presentation, I provided the results of some surveys regarding online teaching and learning in my country, in my university, and in my class. I hope that the information and the practices can help you think about better solutions to this very new and difficult normal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dao. I think this was a very insightful um, presentation because you talk about your reality and um, what what your studies have and how important it is, right, to um, get to know what your students are going through and what they're, what's happening to them. So um, if there are any questions, you can make them now. Yeah, I see we have more participants. Not then, um, I want to thank you. And especially because now it's 4 a.m. in Vietnam, as you shared with us earlier. And so thank you for your um, time and your effort. Um, there's a comment in the chat. Uh, Thank you for thank, sharing. Yeah, thank you, Meholi. Yeah. And this is a wrap. And just want to remind our participants that um, we'll continue with other sessions and to continue with us in this conference. Thank you for um, your participations. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Brenner.
Thank you, Francis.